All the way back when Digimon Savers first came out, one of the more exciting things about that show was that a new Agumon would be the protagonist partner Digimon. I wasn't there at the time, but I could only assume that people might have thought that other adventure Digimon might have got new evolution lines as a result of Savers, but they never did. And thanks to my Digi Destined level channel member Andrew Sobel, on today's video I'm going to be listing my top 10 Digimon who deserve secondary evolution lines just like Agumon from Savers. What is up everybody, welcome to another video. Yes, thank you to my Digidestined Andrew Sobel for this video request. Now, when it comes to Digivolution, as we all know, there are kind of two schools of thought. Digimon, of course, can technically become any other Digimon. Agumon can Digivolve to Garurumon if he wants to. But also in the anime, V-Pets and video games, there are also intended Digivolution lines. I.e. not complete randomness. You have Agumon to Greymon to Metal Greymon and then War Greymon and eventually Omnimon. Or in the case of Savers or Data Squad, Agumon to Geo Greymon, then Rise Greymon, and then Shine Greymon, plus the Burst and Ruin modes for Shine Greymon. So while yes, Digimon technically have tons of branching evolution lines, what I'm specifically talking about on today's video are Digimon that have one main evolution path but I think deserve a second much like Agumon in Data Squad or Savers. So please do like and subscribe, we're hurtling towards 20,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a huge event if we do get to 20,000 including a giveaway. You can always unsubscribe later if you decide you don't like the content anymore, and let's start with number 10. So in at number 10 is Bergamon. Bergamon does have an evolution line of sorts, from Bergamon into Bergamon, <laughs> and then Digitamamon or Jagamon, and then a bunch of evolutions from there. And I don't mind this line. Bergamon becoming Bergamon, but it looks more like an onion chef, to Digitamamon, who is a chef Digimon in adventure. There's a through line there, at least, and then I guess Devi Tamamon at the end. But I would like something more proper for Bergamon. I would like to see two Bergamon, much like we have Ebi Bergamon. I would like to see a normal rookie Bergamon, but really build on the idea of burgers and fast food. Of course, the fat boy wants a McDonald's Digimon. <laughs> I'm really feeling it! But we got Potemon recently in the Digimon anime, adding the kind of french fries to this burger french fries mix. I'd be really interested almost to see like an Aqua Teen Hunger Force Evo line, <laughs> where Bergamon gets like milkshakes or maybe he's a much bigger burger holding ketchup and mustard as cannons. It's reminiscent actually of Bergamon from Kamen Rider Exade, who was basically just a suit with a giant burger on top of it. I don't know, I think there's a lot you could explore here in this fast food theme that Bergamon sets up, and I've always just been really disappointed that they just didn't go anywhere with it. There is a through line of food, but it's just not very fun. In at number nine is Candlemon. I really like the Meramon line, but I have a kind of major disappointment with it. And that is that as a curated line, Demi Meramon to Candlemon to Meramon feels like a weird half step to me. Meramon is obviously much bigger than Candlemon, but to me it feels like Meramon should digivolve straight from Demi Meramon, maybe making Demi Meramon a rookie. I get that Candlemon has the flame, but you completely lose all of the wax and candle holder elements from Candlemon when we go to Meramon. And so while I'm very happy to keep Candlemon, Candlemon in the Meramon evolution line, I wouldn't want to switch it out necessarily. I would like a branching curated evolution for it. Again, you know I don't like bringing up Pokemon unless it serves good purpose, but I think this is a good purpose. Something like the Litwick line would work really nicely here. You could definitely deviate and do something a little bit different with it, but while I appreciate that maybe you can interpret it as the flame of Meramon completely overtaking the candle body, I just like to see more of a kind of Lumiere vibe from a Candlemon Evo. I'm not fully attached to how that line might go but like I say, something like Litwick and Chandelier would make a lot of sense to me and would help it keep its individuality instead of kind of getting engulfed literally by the flame of Meramon. In an eight. eight is Arcademon, and I'm still on the fence as to whether I truly want this or not, but I think I'll explain why. If you've read the Digimon V Tamer manga, you'll know that Arcademon functions in a very interesting way. It absorbs the data about the Digimon to get stronger, but retains its name through evolution. Maybe it's just because I love redemption arcs, I love Kenichi Joji in Zero Two, and I love, spoilers for V Tamer, skip to this timestamp, the redemption of Neo Cyber. Part of me also wishes there could have been some redemption for Arcademon in V Tamer, and so I'm proposing like an Arcademon pure mode. 
or because its name is Arcadimon, coming from Arcadia, a utopian society in Greek mythology, maybe Arcadimon Utopia mode. Now, obviously, there's a lot of allegories in media about intended utopias actually becoming dystopias, and I think that's kind of the realization of Arcadimon. You can't go for a pure utopia without becoming corrupted and evil at heart, but maybe you could, or maybe you could at least represent that ideal in a good form of Arcadimon, maybe purified by angelic Digimon or something. I don't know what it would be, or just the goodness of Neo's heart. I think it'd be very interesting to see Arcadimon's virtue version. Much like how Cherubimon has virtue and vice, I do think it would be interesting just to see a good Arcadimon and what that could be. Maybe it would literally just be an angel. I don't know, but it's something I'd like to see. And a fall through line for that too, if they wanted to. <laughs> In number seven is a trifecta, and you know I normally don't like to combine Digimon on this list, but I think this makes sense, and that is Mon Mon, Kotemon, and Bearmon. Now, of course, in Digimon World 3 or 2003, Mon Mon, Kotemon, and Bearmon do get evolution lines. I was always a little bit let down. I really felt like these three were kind of like new mascot Digimon, much like a Agumon or a Gilmon. They were intended to kind of be something for the franchise going forward, but ideas relating to them never really materialized. And as such, in their games, you get a lot of options for their evolutions, but I always wish that we got something proper for each of them. Mon Mon like has Ape Mon and stuff, and like Goku Mon now, you can make a line out of it, but I'd like it to keep more of its grass elements that you can see in its rookie form, extend through to a full evolution line. No, I don't want Rillaboom, I promise this video isn't just me comparing to Pokemon. <laughs> But I feel less strongly about Mon Mon as I do Kote Mon and Bear Mon. Kote Mon I think really could have done with a full Kendo line. Again, there are now Digimon that kind of fit it more, like Buten Mon and things like that. But again, a full Kendo evolution line or going into different Japanese martial arts sparring techniques rather than outright fighting with blades. I would like to see more Boken sort of designs incorporated into him. Like I say, Dino Humon and Musia Mon and stuff work pretty well. But again, something more dedicated for Kotemon and ideally keeping the Kendo vibe all the way through if they can. And then finally Bearmon. He has Grismon and there is Kalismon which kind of works. So I think Bearmon has a better chance of an evolution line or has better representation in an intended curated evolution line but I still think he's missing something. You could definitely keep Grismon and maybe just make his ultimate and mega or perfect and ultimate new and different because Kalismon is kind of this really big evil Digimon and again you could make like a purified Kalismon, take a leaf out of Agumon's book and do like a Geo Kalismon. <laughs> no, not Geo, but a different take on Kalismon for the Bearmon line. And then again, something that slots in nicely to complete the full evolution line. I'd also really like to, for all of these, including Mon Mon and Kotemon, see some baby and in trainings. We're very limited with our baby and in training choices. And now and then, like with Kyokomon, we get a dedicated in training like Chichimon. But more often than not, we don't. The only real kind of like bear in training we have is Harimon, which is the new snow in training for Blue Kamon. But even that's not overtly bear-like, it's just a little bit bear-like. I think like an actual little cub Digimon would be super cute for Bearmon, and a tiny little monkey baby for Monmon, and like maybe like a small Digimon for Kotemon. I have this strange theory that Kotemon is a Vmon variant, because if you look at his body, it looks like Vmon wearing Kendo armor. So maybe it would just be Demi Vmon would be his in training, but I'd really like to see like what's under the Kendo gear. Not like that, don't make it weird. In number six is Solomon. And yeah, Solomon is a variant. He, alongside Toyagumon and things like that, are Digimon who I think fully deserve a dedicated evolution line, but he does kind of have one. He can go into Glimpmon if you're feeling like doing something a little bit unique. Some other popular lines for Solomon are Clockmon or Gardramon Gold, and they do work nicely, but again, I think you could tie into it deeper. Maybe even bring in vibes of like a Sundial as he is Solomon. There's a lot of potential there. And again, I don't have any firm ideas. If anyone has fan art, that they've done of different Solomon Evos, please do let me know. Let me know on Twitter at Khan underscore EX or in my comments. So while there are some good Digimon that fit, they're not wholly unique to Solomon, and I think it would be a good opportunity, like in a new season of the anime, to have a Haguramon Tamer and a Solomon Tamer show up, and each of them have their own unique Digivolution line. And speaking of the sun, in at number five is Lunamon and Coronamon. Now, of course, Lunamon and Coronamon have their own evolution lines. They are prominent in Digimon Dawn and Dusk, and they even have Grace Novamon, the big Jogress or Fusion that they got in the V-Pets. Here's my tiny little point of contention with Lunamon and Coronamon that I've never really talked about before. Their games are called Digimon World Dawn and Dusk, referencing kind of the two extremes of the time of day where the moon starts to rise and the sun starts to rise. And I get that. 
that. Pokemon Sun and Moon hadn't come out at that point. In fact, even in Japan, the games are called Digimon Sunlight and Moonlight. So they very easily could have been called Digimon Sun and Moon over here. But they didn't. And the fact that they didn't in the localization set my brain whirling. And I always thought that what would have been really cool is if we'd have had the regular lines. Lunamon to Lekismon to Cressamon to Dianamon and Coronamon to Fearamon to Flaremon to Apollomon. I also think it would have been really cool if they'd have got Dawn and Dusk Evos, Dark Evos, or as I'm calling them, Eclipse Evolutions from Coronamon and Lunamon. But you could also do it higher up if you wanted more like a Sagittarius mode or Alterus mode. But personally, I would choose to have it from the base. And then you can explore either a daytime or eclipse mode for Coronamon and a nighttime or eclipse mode for Lunamon. These Evos being darker and more mysterious. Maybe even like virus type, which thinking about it, a virus type Coronamon, yeah. <laughs> Maybe would have been an even worse looking retrospect. But I'm always just a fan of dark evolution, things like ruin mode or blast mode in the Digimon Axel. And I think given the whole sun and moon vibe, the opportunity to look into things like the Eclipse would have been huge. So I would absolutely adore to see Eclipse or Dawn and Dusk evolutions for Lunamon and Coronamon. And at number four is Terriamon. <laughs> been a lot of controversy about Terriamon recently. Oh dear. All I want to say is that I always thought it was kind of a shame that Terriamon got kind of cucked in a couple of ways. <laughs> First of all, Terriamon got Rapidmon Golden Armor in Hurricane Touchdown. And then when it came to getting a full Terriamon evolution line in Digimon Tamers, he just got a green Rapidmon for his ultimate. Or oh, perfect. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. Maybe it could turn out that XVmon's perfect or ultimate stage is like a blue Magnemon. But it always just felt like a bit of a letdown that his third stage or something that we'd seen before like a year or two ago. And then compounded with that is that Lopmon, its matching pair, gets its own really unique set of two evolution lines. Again, Lopmon kind of double dips a little bit. I would like something more unique for its final two stages. But Terriamon gets none of that. There is no alternative to Gargamon. And again, as much as that seems a bit out of the edge, maybe I'd like to see like an evil Gargamon. Well, not even evil, just different. In the same way that Wendigomon is this big lumbering presence and Teruimon is this much smaller close quarters combat kind of Digimon. I'd like to see a different interpretation of Gargamon. As Gargamon gets his jorts and his guns and is on two legs, maybe an alternative take to make it look more like the dog that it's apparently supposed to be. Maybe something on all fours, more kind of dog and wolf-like. Instead of getting guns on its hands, maybe they're on its back or it fires spears or something. Just something to kind of set it apart a little bit and, I don't know, double denim? <laughs> Terriamon's gonna look like Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears at that one red carpet. <laughs> and then from there, something different for its next two forms. I know there's a lot of people who aren't happy with Saint Galgamon or Mega Gargamon. So something different as a result of this branching evolution line would make a lot of sense, especially as Terriamon is kind of doing the same thing that Agumon and Savers is doing. We've had a prominent partner Terriamon, and then in a new season, we get a new prominent partner Terriamon, much like we've had a prominent partner Agumon, and then in Savers, get a new prominent partner Agumon. Take a shot every time I just said prominent partner. <laughs> so yeah, give something new to Terriamon. I'd love to see it and let's get to number three. My number three choice may be controversial to some of you, and that is Kokabuterimon. Kokabuterimon digivolves to Blade Koagamon, and then to Metal Life Koagamon, and then finally Tyrant Kabuterimon. And I like everything in this line, apart from Blade Koagamon. I can't stand it. I hate that Kokabuterimon looks so dope, and then becomes just like a sword. Like, not even a legend arm, just a sword that floats around. It doesn't even have, like, a regular form. Kind of disappointing to me. Metal Life and Tyrant are great, but it's just Blade Koagamon that lets the line down. And I also think you can do something really interesting with it. For a long time, I feel like the Spirit Digimon have kind of been sequestered off to the side. They do show up in random things, but obviously, as is the nature of their evolution, they're supposed to digivolve from humans or become part of Spirit Evolution from humans. We have seen them in card games and side media evolve traditionally. We have things like Strabimon and Flamon, which proves they do have rookie forms, but I've always wanted to see them get folded in more into regular Digimon. It's something you could do with the Frontier Digimon. Just make up new lore for them. I understand why with things like Apmon it's more difficult, but really you could just say this is a non-frontier, non-spirit version of Beetlemon. And if we did that, if we took Beetlemon or Blitzmon in Japan, I think he would be the perfect champion for Kokabuterimon. I'd even go as far as to say you could flip it inverse. Because we only got Strabimon and Flamon and nothing for Kazemon or any of the others, Kokabuterimon would make a really good rookie form for JP Spirit Evolution. But whichever way you cut it, I think Kokabuterimon 
to Blitz slash Beetlemon, and then to Borg or Metal Kabuterimon and Rhino Kabuterimon would be a really nice evolution line for Kabuterimon, and he wouldn't lose his intrinsic design, he'd keep his blue, he'd keep his connection to the Kabuterimon line. I think it would all turn out really nicely, and that's why I so desperately wish this was a canonized evolution line, because right now it isn't. Obviously, everything from Blitzmon is, but not the Kokabuterimon link. Fix it for me, Bandai, you know I love Bug Digimon. <laughs> And then at number two is Gabumon. Now listen, Gabumon was almost my number one choice. If Agumon gets a second evolution path, of course Gabumon deserves one. But Gaumon did act as a kind of Gabumon surrogate. It's actually not Gabumon family, it's Gazimon family, which is a little bit interesting. But we at least have this kind of Gabumon equivalent, but I still firmly believe that Gabumon was kind of shafted a little bit. Agumon ultimately ending up with more final stage evolutions that Gabumon doesn't have. In the new anime, in fact, just spoilers for Digimon Adventure 2020 and Last Evolution Kizuna for the rest of the video, if you care about those. Apologies. <laughs> in Digimon Adventure 2020, we have Blitz Greymon and Kreska Rurumon. We have Sagittarius Mode and Alterus Mode. In Last Evolution Kizuna, they get a matching pair. They even get things like Zed and Victory Greymon. And yet, in Savers or Data Squad, Agumon's the only one that gets Shine Greymon. There's no Moon Garurumon. So of course, I think Gabumon deserves a new line. I don't know what changes you'd make to the evolution line, but I'd certainly like to see it. You can even argue that there are similarities between the Rise and Shine Greymons and Blitz Greymon, it focusing on guns, kind of the inverse to the War Greymon and Metal Garurumon relationship. So yeah, you could do a Garurumon line that's very focused on blades and has got like tank treads or something, I don't know, to kind of inverse the flying elements of Rise and Shine. Rise and Shine, nice. Nice! Nice car! Also, if we look at Adventure 2020, a lot of the other Digimon are getting side forms. Palmon gets to Digivolve to Togemon and Ponchomon. Patamon gets to go to Angemon and Pe Pegasusmon, and while it's true that again Gabumon does get Kreskarurumon and Agumon gets Blitz Greymon, I still would have liked something else for it. Obviously Beomon and Gomamon haven't had anything yet, but the majority of the rest of the cast have had something a little bit different. In fact, Patamon and Gatamon also had Holy Dramon and Godramon this season. So while I don't know if this season would have been the opportunity, I still think we are majorly overdue an alternate full evolution line for Gabumon to match Agumon's one from Savers. And to be honest, all of the other adventure partners could do with it too. Gatamon and Patamon definitely get Get the best treatment in that regard, but I still like to see a full different evolution interpretation for all of those adventure partners, but mostly Gabumon. <laughs> All right, in at number one is Morphomon. Now this really is a sentimental pick for me. I know there are people who loved Kizuna and hated Kizuna, but I think the core story of Menua is very tragic and specifically Morphomon. And many people are very happy with Morphomon's line being Aosmon. Technically Aosmon is not its line. I mean, it is, it's been made into one, but it's artificial. And it's more that Morphomon was forcefully turned into this kind of fake Digimon Aosmon. It's not a natural evolution line. Now, in one of the more recent V pets, we do have Morphomon digivolving into Hoodiemon. Not gonna spoil what Hoodiemon is, but its intrinsic nature kind of is very exclusive to a specific character or set of characters in the Cyber Sleuth games. And so, yes, Butterfly becoming Butterfly works. I'm not happy with that. And again, it's not a full evolution line. Butterflies and Dragonflies, I think, in Digimon are the least utilized design school. Ironic, given that Wada Koji's whole legacy and song is about the song Butterfly. And that is also why Morphomon was a butterfly. Flying Kizuna. I would really like to see a full dedicated Morphomon line from Baby all the way through to Mega. Aosmon is fun. In the card game, it's great. In Last Evolution Kizuna, it's an imposing threat, but it's not the proper evolution. And again, Hoodiemon has just kind of been retroactively fitted because, hey, two butterflies go together. So I would adore to see Morphomon in tribute, if nothing else, to its tragic story and its only real outing, get to see its full evolution line, even if it's just concept art. I'd like to see Morphomon show up in Adventure 2020, but it's probably Probably not gonna happen and if it did happen the monkey's paw would probably close and Meikumon would show up too. I don't hate Meikumon's design it's just a meme about try. And so that's why Morphomon's my number one because it's not just that it deserves a second evolution line it's that it deserves an evolution line. You can absolutely count Aosmon as its primary evolution line but Aosmon is steeped in tragedy and regret and darkness and I would love to see a butterfly through line that really represents Morphomon and Menua's childhood innocence and Digimon as a franchise. The legacy of Wada Koji, the legacy of Digimon Adventure, I think you could really distill into this beautiful through line evolution of butterflies for Morphomon, and that's why it's my number one pick. 
All right, that's the list. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to my DigiDestined Andrew Sobel for suggesting this video. I am gonna be getting through a few more of my DigiDestined requests up until October when the Spooktober Spectacular will begin again. And if you've gotten this far, as I said at the start of the video, please do subscribe if you've gotten this far. You can always unsubscribe if you don't like the channel in future. If we get to 20,000 subscribers this year, I'm gonna do some incredible things for the community, some giveaways, some fun streams and stuff. So that'd be awesome to see if we could get there together. And let's thank some channel members. The amazing DigiDestin level channel members. NQG420, Triple D, Night12, Andrew Sobel, Sad Uncle Callum, Crimson Dragon Slayer, and Anthony Von Tomasi. Thank you, DigiDestin. And again, please do get your request in. Takes me a while to work through them, but I absolutely adore seeing your ideas for videos. And the Tamers, Me Will, The Blessed Rain, Erin Harpy, Emily, John Hawkins, Mike McNulty, Theo Navarro, and Reese Williams. Thank you, Tamers, and to the Khan Club. Like I say, Khan Club members get access to all my early videos, and all the other tiers have a ton of different rewards you can get. So please do check that out, and I'll see you next time when we go digital. Bye bye.